Hey guys, so I'll be talking about this guy, uh, James Prescott Jewell. We all probably know him best because of the SI unit of energy that's named after him, the Jewell. But hopefully through this presentation, I will show you that he is actually a pretty interesting guy who made some significant impactful discoveries in the field of physical chemistry. First of all, uh, Jewell lived from 1818 to 1889. He grew up in a wealthy home in Lancashire, England. As a young fellow, he was tutored at the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society by James Dalton. Uh, you know James Dalton, the guy who has the law about partial pressures. Real famous chemist guy. Um, James Dalton just got him excited about chemistry and science. Um, but anyway, for Jewel, science was always a serious hobby, but not necessarily a career. He actually worked at this place. That's right, a brewery. Um, although he had a passion for science, beer was his first love, or at least that's how his family made money. But he did have a genuine interest in science and spent his free time, even some of his time at the brewery, doing different research. Um, as an older adult, when he took ownership of the brewery, Jewell began pondering replacing the brewery's steam engines with electrical motors. But before replacing the steam engines, he wanted to know which method was more efficient. So he researched the heat produced by electrical currents, which eventually led to Joule's first law, which relates heat and voltaic currents. Um, then he started his research on the convertibility of energy. Joule sought to quantify the relationship between mechanical work and heat produced. He used this apparatus to measure the thermal energy produced from a certain amount of mechanical energy put into a system. The falling weight over here um, that you can measure the length right here of the mechanical work put in makes these paddles spin around which heats the water which can be um, measured by this thermometer right here. So Joule was actually famous for the accuracy in which he measured the results of these experiments and through um, several repetitions of this experiment he discovered that the relationship between mechanical work and heat had a constant conversion ratio he reported his findings in 1843 saying, wherever a me mechanical force is expended, an exact equivalent of heat is always obtained. At first, he received a lot of opposition from the scientific community about this conclusion, but Joule held his ground referencing the precise quantitative relationship that he showed between the mechanical effort expended and heat produced in these experiments. Joule then worked to publicize uh, this doctrine of the conservation of energy as it relates to mechanical work and heat. His findings later led to the law of conservation of energy, which eventually led to the development of the first law of thermodynamics, which we studied exten extensively in this physical chemistry class. Later in his life, um, Joule worked with Lord Kelvin to develop the absolute scale of zero for temperature. Eventually, um, Joule was recognized by uh, naming the SI unit of Joule for energy after him. Uh, this unit is equal to the energy transferred or work done to an object when a force of one newton acts on the object in the direction of its motion through a distance of one meter, as you can see from the equation above. Um, so we're still hearing Joule's names every time we talk about energy in class, so it's a pretty famous guy. If you're interested in learning more about James Prescott Jewell, I would highly suggest the book um, James Jewell, A Biography by Donald S. Cardwell. That's where I got all the information for this presentation, and it was actually a pretty interesting, well-written book, so if you have some free time after finals are over, I suggest that you read about him in your spare time. Thanks!